Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play Blades of Avertum. Last episode, we finally finished the last scenario I had by Michael Slack. It's time to move on to others. This next one is made by someone named Jamand. This area says a party of level 2 to 4 to do it, but I'm grabbing this level 5 party just because I already have it. So, let's go on to Wilderness. Make your way along a treacherous mountain trail. Long periods of peace and prosperity are often bad for adventurers, and the current one is getting to you. With no dragons to slay or castles to besiege, you are left with very little to do. Nothing to do means no pay. <coughs> Fortunately, luck was on your side one rainy day, when a wizard named Hubert met you in an inn and asked you to deliver a package for you. He wanted you to deliver it to the town of Boltforth. He told you that his friend in Boltforth would pay you when you got there. Knowing wizards to be trustworthy people and not knowing where the town was, you accepted. Turns out that Boltforth is situated near the top of some of the tallest mountains around. The spring thaw having started weeks before, the main road is blocked by avalanches. You decide to take a small trail leading into the mountains. There was no way you could know that another avalanche would block your way out. Either way, you have a package to deliver and a trail to explore. You set up a basic campsite on the small trail leading up and into the Forbidding Mountains. You don't have much food or supplies. Hopefully there's a town along the trail somewhere. Something about the mountains seems unnatural. You haven't seen any animals. There are no wolves howling during the night. It's the beginning of spring, but there sure isn't a lot of life around. The trail leads off to the west. If there are any settlements in the area, they'll be in that direction. Okay. Oop. You look back at the path leading down the mountain. The avalanche has completely covered it with snow and loose rocks. Stepping on it would probably lead to a swift, if not survivable, trip down the mountain slide. Side. It's fairly dark out. If you were given a choice, you would rather not traverse these mountains at night, but you do what you have to. Thick fog is starting to roll up the mountainside from the valley below. Disconcerting. The path begins to slope up here. You notice it getting colder. In the darkness, you see something glowing. It's a large stone sitting in a puddle of water. It's slightly warm. There are several strange glyphs set into it. You don't know what they mean. You hear a faint noise almost directly above you. You look up the steep cliff face to your north, and at the very top, you can see lights. There must be a small town up there. Now you just need to get to it. You can see the moon glowing behind the church steeple. There's a full moon tonight. As you're walking along, something colorful catches your eyes. There's a flower growing right by you. You don't know what kind it is, but flowers are pretty rare in the mountains in winter. You grab it and take it with you. You climb around a thick group of trees to find two tents half buried in the snow. A quick search reveals that the owners are nowhere around. The tents are old and worn. They have been abandoned for a long time. <coughs> Much of the stuff in the tents is useless, except that you find some ice picks, rope, and grapnels. They can come in handy, so you take them. I didn't even notice that. Even with the old climbing gear, it isn't easy getting to the top of the slope, but you make it. You stop to rest at the top. In the thick fog, you can't see the town anymore, but it is roughly to the east of where you are now. A red light catches your eye as you're exploring the mountains. After a minute of digging, you manage to extract a large red quartz crystal. Huh. You trip over something in the snow. It turns out to be a large blue stone. The red and blue quartz gems in your packs are strangely attracted to one another. When they get close together, the runestone glows very brightly. Maybe something will happen if you put them together. Sure. The two stones glow brightly, and within a sound like lightning striking, they, found a, they form a single clear crystal. When you look inside, you can see electricity arcing around. Curious. You catch a faint glimmer of light in the distance. It can't be very far now. It is odd, though. You haven't seen any animals, and it's almost spring. There's no way to farm on this mountainside, and no one ever comes this way. How can anyone survive out here? You 
finally reached the town, whatever it's called. It's very small, and there aren't any people visible. No one comes out to greet you when you get closer. They probably aren't expecting travelers this time of year, but you get a nagging suspicion that there isn't anyone at all. <coughs> there isn't a lot to this remote village. A couple of houses, what looks like a shop, an inn, and a small church. It's barely big enough to be considered a village. At first you thought there was nobody here, but there is a bonfire lit in front of the inn, and there are lights in the windows. Hopefully the food at the inn is good. Light. There's no reason to go back out into the night when you could get a room at the inn here. You need a rest. Of course. Okay, can't go in there. That must be the end over there. This building looks like it was once a shop. It's closed now, and a layer of dust covers everything. sign is so old and worn that you can hardly read it. You can just barely make out the word supplies. Alright, let's investigate the supply store. Got some coins. Okay. Sandals, I don't think we need. No. Lockpicks. Sure. And we have a bowl. There's nothing in this place, really. Hold on. Oh no, that's a table. There's a small, dusty chapel here. It's old and disused. The altar is a simple stone slab. It isn't much, but it must do for the townspeople. Okay. This is the village anton. It's very small and not well furnished, but it's much better than being out in the elements. The people barely notice you come in. They all seem to stare glumly ahead. Even the innkeeper doesn't seem very happy to see more customers. Maybe there's been a death or something. The only person who reacts at all is the woman at the far table who waves as you come in. Very curious. There's a musty and poorly lit back room out here. A sign in sheet sits on a desk with no one behind it. An empty bookcase covers up some of the peeling wallpaper. The stairs up are in the far corner of the room. There's a trap door leading down to the cellars. You have no reason to go through. The man shrugs. He must not want to talk very much. You sit down next to the man over here. He seems to be rather drunk. You ask his name. He shakily replies, Bert? What do you do here? He pauses for a second. I farm. His voice is unsteady. How do you farm? There's no space for it around here. He pauses again, and his voice is different when he answers you. There's a spot down below the cliff. When there isn't snow, I farm it. His eyes move to meet yours for the first time since he sat down. What do you grow? I grow some barley and wheat. Why? You notice that the woman across the room moves her lips every time Bert says something. You make your excuses. There's something very strange going on. As soon as you stop talking, a bird twitches and resumes staring straight ahead. Okay, then. I think I have a slight idea here. The man is sitting awkwardly in his chair, staring at a point on the wall. He barely seems to be breathing. Is something wrong? He takes a minute for a man to respond. When he does, his voice sounds like sandpaper. 
No, nothing's wrong. I think you've had too much to drink. The man looks at you, no expression on his face. I... but... I... This talented person is sitting while glumly injecting massive quantities of foul-smelling substance. It doesn't seem to have noticed you. Are you okay? If the man shrugs, he must not want to talk very much. The innkeeper greets you with a friendly, What do you want? The sign behind him proclaims that stew is five gold, whiskey is ten, and a room is twenty. What can I get here? We got food, some, uh, whiskey, and, uh, rooms. He gestures vaguely at a sign behind him. You notice that he has an annoying way of staring right at your forehead and not making eye contact. Is something wrong? Everyone seems unhappy. No, uh, nothing's wrong. Huh. A red-haired woman sits at this table looking bored. You ask her name. Jennifer, but everyone calls me Jen. Do you live here? She rolls her eyes. No way. I'm just traveling. Like you, it looks like. Why are you here? I had an accident. She seems unwilling to say more on the subject. Do you know where Boldforth is? If I knew where anything was, would I be here? Do you know what's wrong with everyone here? Wrong? What, are they acting weird or something? I hadn't noticed. Are you doing something to Bird over there? She looks at you quizzically. What? I'm not doing anything to him. I don't even know him. Suspicious. We're hungry. Can I have some stew? The innkeeper gets some bowls of lumpy gray goo. It's probably the worst stew you've ever eaten, and it doesn't fill you up either. We'd like the whiskey, please. You hand over the coins, and the innkeeper fills some mugs with a noxious substance. It tastes like 40-proof sewage. Can we get a room? The innkeeper, still staring at a point just above your eyes, points in the general direction of the other room. You hand him the money, and he slowly puts it under the counter. Okay. Obviously, something's going on around here that is very wrong. The bedrooms are in the upper floors here. Your room is the first one on the right. The inn is rather run down. The carpet is worn, the walls could use replastering, but it's a palace compared to how cold it is outside, and the price isn't terrible. This isn't your room. Your room is the other one. This is your room for the night. It isn't much. A large, threadbare rug covers the floor. There are four small beds and a chest of drawers. One set of moth-eaten curtains flaps lazily in the cold breeze. The other window is un uncovered. You climb into bed and fall asleep in minutes. Sometime later, you are woken up by horrible noises emanating from somewhere downstairs. These aren't your run-of-the-mill horrible noises, either. You all sit bolt upright and grab the nearest weapons you can reach. You're no experts, but it sounds like things are being ripped in half while horrible monsters scream. You glance out the window and see the full moon in the middle of the night sky. Another night without sleep. It's pretty dark out, so you grab the torch from the wall. If nothing else, you can hit things with it pretty hard. You enter this room, hoping to find some people who can help, but there's no one inside. In fact, further investigation reveals that there was quite a struggle in here. The occupants seem to have been dragged out of the room by something large, with claws. You can't tell if the blood is fresh or not. Problematic. You're about to go down the stairs when you hear a door below you open downstairs and several things step into the room. Needless to say, they sure aren't human. Needless to say, you really don't want to go down this way. A thought occurs to you. You still have all the climbing equipment, and you could just as easily go out the window in your room. As you reach the window, you hear things coming up the stairs quickly. You practically dive out the window to get out. You land on the roof of the stable. Or you would have if, some roof were, if the roof were built better. You crash through it and land on some hay bales below. At least you're out. You've landed in the stable. Above you, you you and and hear the door to your room being smashed in. What you should probably do now is head to the chapel. Churches are good places to go when attacked by horrible monsters. You think it would be better to seek refuge in the chapel than be out in the dark without shelter or defense. You turn back. What the? That 
building was destroyed. Given a choice between a building full of monsters and the nice, hopefully safe church, which would you rather go to? Here's a hint. Most people would take the church. You come running up to where you think the chapel is, only to find a slightly raised area of snow. Shattered remains of a wall are barely visible in one corner. One thing is for sure, this church wasn't destroyed recently. The stone has been worn down by years of wind and snow. The whole town looks different, actually. What's going on here? You don't have much time to ponder on this, though. You think you can hear Jen's voice coming from the I from in the inn. You better go see if she's okay. Oh, boy. What the? Brass knuckles? Really? Well, it's something. And a broken chair. I guess I could smack things with it. But it's two-handed. Not gonna use that. More brass knuckles. Another broken chair. Kitchen knife. Poison for some reason. <laughs> There go those. Decaying shirt, shredded pants. You hear Jen in the inn calling for help, but something isn't right. When you get closer, you can see what it is. She's paler than before, has fangs, and seems to be standing about two inches off the ground. A vampire! Looking inside the inn, you notice that the large barrel of whiskey is broken open, and its torches are spilled across the floor. You've still got that torch. Blow some stuff up. Alright, let's get in there. You should be able to do this. That was effective. Right, and you can finish her off. The vampiress collapses. She lies still for a minute and then fades away. She leaves a ring behind on the floor. Okay. Managed to get through that. There's a trap door leading out down to the cellars. There are rather unpleasant noises coming from down below. You pile some crates on top of it. What's this ring we got? Okay, leave that behind. Probably a special item, I guess. Okay. We made it out of that. Okay. You stagger as quickly as possible away from the haunted town. The wind is bitterly cold. After a couple of minutes, you hear a flapping noise. You look around and see that there are bats everywhere. That vampire must not be dead after all. In the distance, you hear laughter. The 
path ahead of you dead ends sharply. You'll have to go back. The path slopes up again. You're feeling so exhausted that it's hard to climb. The bats are still flying after you, which doesn't help. Every time you see a shape in the snow, you think it's a monster. The laughter in the distance is getting louder. Except for your panting, everything is suddenly quiet. A little too quiet. You look up and see a pair of faintly glowing red eyes looking back down. Thinking quickly, Fox grabs a rock and throws it towards a vampiress. It flies straight through her, landing with a thud. She laughs and floats off to the west. Maybe you got lucky and destroyed her physical form in the fight, and she can't actually do anything to hurt you. If she had wanted to, there would have been ample opportunity along this trail. For the first time in hours, you don't hear bats following you. Looking around, you think you notice why. There's a makeshift grave over next to you. It isn't much, just two branches tied together to make a crude cross. There's no name on it. You look up a little bit and see the vampire standing and watching you. Oddly, she doesn't seem hostile. Looks like she's waiting to see what you do. You could place the flower on her grave. It would be a good gesture, and you are in no condition for a fight. You flip the fa flower on her grave and wait. The vampire looks at you, smiles slightly, and walks off into the fog. You don't bother looking for her. For the first time since you started climbing, the mountain seems cheerful. When you glance at the horizon, you can see the sun starting to rise. You rest for a minute, then head off. Climb over the crest of another hill and are overjoyed to see the town of Boltsforth in the distance. You must be almost done with this unpleasant journey. Hooray. You run into Boltsforth nearly skipping with happiness. You attract many strange stares covered in blood and looking awful. Fortunately, one of the guards is willing to talk to you. He directs you to a clerk who directs you to another clerk who directs you to a constabulary who sends you to an engineer of some kind who weighs in the general direction of the rest of the town. After a while, you find a large house situated next to the gold mine that seems to be the town's sole source of income. A nearby man says that a wizard named Levington lives there. Levington invites you in, and you deliver the package. Turns out to be some rare herbs and reagents. Levington hands you a small pouch that jingles nicely. He gets you a cup of tea while you tell him about the trip you had. Just before you leave, you ask him about the town you fought through. Where? he says, arcing one eyebrow and glancing at your bloody weapons. That place burnt down years ago. You search for the ring the vampirist drops, only to find it missing. Well, that was a fascinating little story. I wonder what the purpose of that gem we had was. And it was an interesting story about a haunted, destroyed town, a vampirist of sorts who haunted it until someone paid her some respects. It was interesting. Not too bad. Could have done with a little more, uh... Spell checking, but overall not that bad. Next episode, we'll move on to another scenario. Till then, I'm Chester44, that is Fox Creek, Bonnie, and Draco. This has been a Blaze of Vernon Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.